Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science. And today I'm going to help you figure out if it's really organic. Now there are so many products out there with organic in the title or claiming to be mostly organic ingredients. I thought I'd create a video that will help consumers understand or what to look for to find out if a product really is certified organic and to also help cosmetic chemists when they're looking to develop organic products. Now before I get started in this video, I do want to point out there are a lot of certifiers of organic products depending on where you are in the world and their rules all differ. So it's a bit of a minefield to begin with. But what I'm going to be working to today is the Cosmos Organic Standard. Now I want to point out this video is not sponsored by Cosmos. As a cosmetic chemist, I find their standard the easiest to formulate with because it was created specifically for cosmetic chemistry and the types of issues we need to solve when formulating cosmetic products. Some of the other standards have been developed for food products primarily, which means some of their rules aren't very applicable to cosmetic products and it actually creates some formulation issues. So in this video, I'm going to be emphasizing the rules according to the Cosmos standard. Now the other thing before I get started into this video is I'm basing this video on a certifier standard. These are not rules I'm making. These are not rules that are just created. These are rules that have been created by a certifying body in an attempt to help consumers figure out if a product really is organic by permitting certain ingredients and disapproving certain other ingredients and it's also been generated as a standard to help formulators create a product that consumers can trust as predominantly organic or at least to their rules so that we have a standard playing field. So I will be mentioning some chemicals as permitted when they're not even natural but I want you to remember I'm basing it on the certifiers rules. If you have questions about their standard and why do they permit certain ingredients and not others, you'll need to contact the certifier directly because I didn't make the rules. I'm just here today to help you understand them. So the overarching principles according to Cosmos is that to be certified organic, the products must contain a certain amount of physically processed ingredients. These are things like your extracts, your plant oils, and from these particular materials, a minimum of 95% of physically processed inputs must be organic. They also have an overarching principle that 20% of the formula must contain certified organic materials unless it's a wash off non emulsified product in which case it must contain a minimum of 10% organic ingredients or if it's a mineral product or contains mineral ingredients such as your mineral makeup powders then it must contain a minimum of 10% organic ingredients. Now the rest of these formulas to be certified organic must only contain approved materials and again it differs by different certifiers but I'll be talking through the Cosmos rules in this video today. So one of the things you'll see in organic products is that they usually contain reasonably high on their ingredient list when they're water based a reconstituted organic aloe vera juice or an organic hydrosol. Now this is often required because a lot of the cosmetic products we make contain a large percentage of water and water can't be a part of that organic input. So to achieve a minimum 20% organic input, instead of using some water, we need to replace it with an organic hydrosol or an organic aloe vera juice that's been reconstituted from a powder. Another thing you also see in organic products is sometimes they'll use synthetic preservatives. The types of preservatives we can use in certified organic products is very limited. They're very specified, but they may be synthetic. 
Preservatives such as potassium sorbate, sodium benzoate, they are nature identical. There's other preservatives we can use as well. And if you want a full list, please contact the certifying body you're looking to certify your product with. But I'm just using these two as an example because there's a lot of misinformation out there that suggests that you can't use synthetic preservatives in organic products. You can if they're on the approved list. And there's also misinformation that says that sodium benzoate, potassium sorbate, sorbic acid are all naturally occurring because they're in organic products, which is not true because in personal care products, we actually use the nature identical or synthetic forms. And that's simply a commercial supply issue, which is why the synthetic version gets used, albeit completely identical to that which occurs in nature. But we need to preserve our personal care products properly. I have a video on preservatives and just because they're synthetic doesn't mean they're not safe. Just because a preservative is natural doesn't mean it is safe. They're all regulated and they do need to be used in certain inputs and only approved preservatives are allowed in your certified organic products. So for full information about preservatives and some of the mistruths out there, as well as how do you find those limits, please watch that preservatives video. It's a great source of information on preservatives in general. Another ingredient that is often a source of controversy is palm oil and palm oil derivatives. Now these are allowed in organic certified products where they have at least a mass balance certification. So if you want to use a palm oil or a palm oil derivative and there's loads out there, please watch one of my videos on palm free. It's very hard to formulate palm free. It's tucked away in a lot of cosmetic ingredients because of its useful hydrocarbon chain. But if you want to use a palm oil or derivative in an organic certified product, you need to be using at minimum a mass balance supply product. So now's probably a good time to point out that if you want to formulate a certified organic product, you better like paperwork because you need to provide your certifier a fair bit of it when you're going through the certification process. You also need to be prepared to check their rules over and over, including referencing, cross-referencing, calculating composition and checking their appendices very carefully to make sure you are only using permitted ingredients or other ingredients allowed within the permissible limits. Now I've recently filmed some video on creating organic shampoos and organic conditioners and there's been some comments left by people asking about uh, ingredients such as cocomata propyl betaine and guar hydroxypropyl trimonium chloride. So I wanted to point these ones out in particular and then also explain a few other anomalies with the organic certification process. So first of all, cocomata propyl betaine and guar hydroxypropyl trimonium chloride are commonly found in your shampoos and shampoos and conditioners respectively. They do contain petrochemical moieties, synthetic components. So it's incorrect to suggest that a cocomata propyl betaine or guar hydroxypropyl trimonium chloride is totally naturally derived because there is some synthetic portion present. That's the truth of it. But there is Appendix 5 in the COSMOS certification standard that permits certain materials even where petrochemical moieties or synthetic components are present. You can see that list on the screen now. I'll just talk you through some of these substances and the common inky names, but you can also email us for this full list and additional information that's part of this video. You'll see in this list, cocomata propyl betaine is permitted. You'll also see the amphoacetate chemical group. So ingredients such as sodium cocoamphoacetate are also permitted in organic products where the petrochemical moiety must not exceed a total of 2% of the finished product. Carboxymethylcellulose is permitted with that limit in mind. The guar hydroxypropyl trimonium chloride from certain suppliers only is also permitted, again with the 2% petrochemical moiety limit. And we can also see that there are selected hydrolyzed wheat proteins also permitted. Now, if you're going to be formulating organic products, 
Number one, you need to pick your, your certifier and you must obtain a full copy of their rules. You can also ask them for detailed lists once you've joined up with them on materials that are approved for use even when they contain some of these petrochemical moieties because they will accept materials from certain suppliers that have provided them with the necessary documentation for them to allow their use or they won't allow the same chemical or material from any supplier that hasn't gone through their particular certification process. And this is to hold their certification standards at a minimum level. You'll also notice with this particular list I've just shown you that they talk about how they will be reviewed from time to time and may be removed. So in the videos I filmed on organic shampoos and organic conditions, I purposely left these materials out because they may not be permitted in future versions of the standard. So if you are going to use these ingredients, make sure you remember they are limited in their petrochemical moiety content, but they may also be prohibited in future revisions of the standard over time. Another thing I wanna go through is the use of lipids. So I talked about how 95% of the physically processed ingredients need to be from organic sources. A big part of your emulsions and that input would be your lipids used. So lipids include obviously vegetable oils and you can get a lot of certified organic plant and vegetable oils now. But lipids can also include your esters certain esters that have all naturally derived starting stock and go through a sterification process are permitted in organic products. A good example of this is Myrostyle Myrostate, which you see in some organic skincare. It's a nice light skin feel ester. But you will see materials like isopropyl Myrostate used in some personal care products. Now this has a synthetic portion and it doesn't belong in a certified organic product. Now on this screen you can see some common materials to look out for in your ingredient list that aren't allowed in organic cosmetic products. The reason I'm providing this list is for consumers it can be very confusing especially with some of those inky names that are on your labels and if you try looking on the internet that's even more confusing. So first of all, I've listed out some of the common inky names you should look for in foaming products because these particular materials are not permitted in organic products. So if you see isethanate in the inky list, taurate, polyquaternium or glycol disdierate, they're not permitted in truly certified organic products. So if you see any of these, the finished product isn't certified organic. If you have a conditioner product, then if you see the inky words cetrimonium chloride, behentrimonium chloride, behentrimonium methosulfate, or polyquaternium, again, these aren't permitted in certified organic products, which means if you see these in the ingredient list, the product is not certified organic. Other materials that you'll commonly see include inky names like isopropyl, dimethicone, silicon, PPG, PEG, polysorbate, for example, polysorbate 20 or polysorbate 60, and satirith 20. These again are materials that are prohibited in certified organic cosmetics. So if you see any of these in the ingredient list, the finished product is not certified organic because it can't include these ingredients. And finally, you'll also see things like vitamins listed. Now, vitamins such as retinol and retinaldehydes, panthenol and niacinamide are all nature identical. This means they come from synthetic sources and they are not permitted in certified organic products. Which means if your product claims to be organic and contains these ingredients, then again, it's not truly organic because these are not permitted in certified organic products. If you're looking for vitamin C, ascorbic acid, ascorbyl palmitate and ascorbyl glucoside are permitted from some suppliers.
while sodium ascorbyl phosphate and magnesium ascorbyl phosphate are not permitted in certified organic products. So again, if you see sodium ascorbyl phosphate or magnesium ascorbyl phosphate in the ingredient list, then the finished product is not truly organic. It's also interesting to note that zinc oxide and your iron oxides, yellow, black and red, are not truly natural. Now these materials are permitted to be used in certified organic products, even though they're not truly natural. They're mined from the ground, which means they do need some significant processing and purification steps to ensure any heavy metal or other contaminants are removed before they're used in personal care. However, zinc oxide and iron oxides are permitted for use in certified organic products, even though they're not truly natural. There is synthetic components and synthetic processing step these materials go through to ensure consumer safety and suitability for use in personal care products. So really any products containing these materials should not be claiming they're 100% natural because they're not. So if your bottle of shampoo, conditioner, moisturizer, makeup, or any product you're using has organic in the title, check it against that list. If it contains any of those ingredients or the inky names that I showed you on the screen, and you can get this full list from us, just email us, it's absolutely free, then your product is not truly certified organic. So how can a consumer know if they're really buying an organic product? Look for certification. Now this logo should be from one of the certifiers that I've shown on this video. I've also shown you a big list of ingredients that aren't permitted in certified organic products. So if your product contains one of these ingredients, it's really not certified organic and it shouldn't be having the name organic in the claims or the product name. As a consumer, if you're looking for a certified organic product, look for one of these logos. It's your way of knowing that company has gone through a lot of extra checks and formulation steps to make sure they're providing you with a certified organic product. No, it doesn't mean it's completely natural in some cases. I've talked through nature identical preservatives that are permitted. And I've also talked about some ingredients that contain petrochemical moieties that are permitted as well as your zinc oxide and your colorant iron oxides. But if you want those types of products and you wanna know that they're as natural as they can be with the other ingredients they contain and contain a minimum organic input, then that logo showing certification is the best way that you can know as a consumer that that company has taken extra steps to give you the truly certified organic product you want to be buying. Use your consumer dollars to vote no to those companies that just say their product is organic and natural, but use an ingredient that really isn't permitted in a certified organic product. Hopefully one day we'll see some firm regulations in place and a bit more clarity for consumers so that when you want to purchase a certified organic product, it's a lot clearer that you're actually purchasing what you're looking to purchase rather than a product with just organic or natural in the title and maybe not as much organic input as they are suggesting it contains. And of course, if you're looking to formulate organic products, make sure you get the certified standard. Read it in detail, be prepared to check paperwork and calculate your compositions carefully and go through the extra steps of getting the formula certified organic. It's not certified organic until you've got the certification. I hope you've enjoyed this content and I hope you can at least see now, is it really organic? Please make sure you leave any questions or comments below. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content. Make sure you contact us for the extra information I've talked about and subscribe to receive notifications of all our videos. Happy formulating.